Hello viewers, my name is Sindhan Gothari and I am a an water resource engineer. Our today's topic of discussion is floodway encroachment analysis using HEC RAS. Let's start with our discussion. Before we start with HEC RAS, it's important to establish some key terms and concepts. Let's start with something very basic. What we are observing on the screen is a river cross section. For a given discharge through this cross section, a specific water elevation will be reached occupying a certain cross sectional area. We can refer to this water elevation as the natural flood elevation and the corresponding area as the natural flood plain. Now, what will happen? If we obstruct this flood plain, it will lead to an increase in flood levels. As engineers, we are interested in various hydraulic parameters, with the most common ones being what could be the change in water surface elevation, what could be a change in flow velocity. From planning perspective, we need to explore how much of the flood plain can be encroached upon for a given rise in water elevation. This is the central topic of our discussion. For our analysis, we will be using few terminologies coined in FEMA guidelines. Let's look into that. First is the base flood. It is the flood that has 1% probability of exceeding in any given year. And it is also referred to as 1 in 100 year return period flood. Second is the base flood elevation. It is the water surface elevation observed for the base flood and plays an essential role in the national flood insurance program. Third is the floodway. It is that portion of the floodplain which must be kept free of development to allow the passage of the base flood through the channel. Lastly, there is a flood fringe which is a portion of the floodplain that lies beyond the floodway and serves as a temporary storage area. It is important to note that these guidelines are specific to the USA and may differ in other countries. One can explore and develop new approaches to analyze the channel hydraulics. Within HEC RAS, there are five methods to do such analysis. In method one, the user will straight away define the encroachment station for both the banks and program will calculate water level based on that. The methods from two to five are somewhat iterative in nature as they all calculate encroachment stations based on the constraint specified in the respective methods. So we need to define maximum limit of encroachment station. In all of this method, there is a condition that if the calculated encroachment stations cross the bank station, the iteration will stop and the bank station will be set as the final encroachment station. There is one more term known as offset station. If somebody wants to leave a margin on both banks, they can do so using the offset station. Now the iteration will stop at the offset station instead of the bank station. This concept does not apply to method 1 because there we are defining the stations by our own. In method 2, we have to choose a fixed top width for the flood wheel. The algorithm will find the center station and subtract half of the chosen top width to determine the encroachment stations. In method 3, we need to specify a reduction in conveyance based on the natural water elevation. For example, if we specify a 40% conveyance reduction, the algorithm will deduct 20% of conveyance from both banks, resulting in an equal conveyance reduction. If one bank has insufficient capacity, to achieve the intended reduction, the algorithm will deduct the remaining conveyance from opposite bank. If the amount of conveyance to be removed exceeds the capacity of both sides, the encroachment station will be set to either the bank station or the offset station. In method 4, we need to give target surcharge over base profile. 
the algorithm then will calculate conveyance for base profile and base plus target profile. The difference in this conveyance is then deducted equally from both banks in such a way that the conveyance within the encroach cross section equals the conveyance of the natural cross section at natural water level. The limits of encroachment station are determined similarly to those in method 3 in case of inadequate conveyance capacity. Just to show you the difference between method 3 and 4 again, method 3 is based on base flood elevation in calculation of conveyance reduction and method 4 is based on conveyance difference between base profile and base plus target profile. Last is method 5. In this method we need to define both target surcharge over base profile and also maximum change in energy. Rest of the concept remains similar to method 3 and 4. So what is the general process? General process is to estimate the flood way using method 3, 4 or 5 and later refine it with method 1 and 2.